How's it going, everybody? So I'm gonna try to do something hazardous. I'm gonna live code in 10 minutes, and we'll see you know what happens here. Uh, so the title of this is Git Voodoo. Uh, basically, I want you guys to not be afraid to touch the command line in Git. Um, so a little bit of history. Git created by Linus Torvalds. Uh, he was going to create the Linux kernel as it, uh, as you guys know it today, like Ubuntu and everything else. Uh, and he saw the different uh, version control that was out there, and he's like, I can do better, this is awful, let me have a stab at it. Um, so how does it work? Uh, Git flow for noobs is you clone it down, uh, so that you get your source code, and in your source code comes uh, a little tiny Git directory. Uh, inside of that Git directory is all of the uh, different things that it uses to keep track of your source code. Uh, so if you want to, you know, you go in and make a little change, you've cloned something down, you want to continue on, so type git status, make sure you're, you're good, you'll, you know, again, I'm just going to walk you through really fast. Uh, git add, uh, when you actually have a change, you add that to the stage, you git commit, uh, you have a message, and then you finally push that up. So what I want to talk about today is what if you go to push up and you have an issue or something does not, uh, you know, you get an error or something happens. Most likely that means there are changes upstream or on your remote that you don't have locally. So in the case of that, usually you would do git pull. Uh, so I'm here today to argue the default methodology for git pull is, is kind of, you know, that's, that's, there are different cases where you'd want to merge, uh, which is what git pull does as the default, but there's this other really nice thing called rebase. And a lot of people are extremely scared to use it though. So, a real world example, how to use Git Rebase. So today we're gonna to be exploring this awesome node repository called Hackathon Starter uh, that literally has every API imaginable for you. Uh, all right, so as that downloads, and again, live coding in 10 minutes, we'll see how this, this bears. Um, okay, so let's jump into the directory and let's show a little bit to do really briefly what the heck is inside of that little Git repository or the Git uh, uh, directory. So your head is your current tracking, you got a config, you got some hooks, you got some whatever. Who knows what the hell is in here? But don't be afraid to explore if you have an issue later on. Um, so, and it, just a little tiny other piece of that as well. Uh, so this is what happens. This is how Git knows exactly where the remote is and what's going on. Again, you can see it's tied to my GitHub. Feel free to check that out later for this talk um, and some other you know, random tidbits. But what I really want to do today is show you a concept of what to do in the case of things going wrong. Uh, so as you can see here, these are all of the branches that exist on the remote. So we have a master, we have a change one, and a change two. Um, obviously, we want to go ahead and apply these changes, but first, I'm just going to show you a tiny little piece of what, uh, so git checkout dash t origin change one. What just happened is I grabbed the branch change one that exists on the remote, put it down locally, it's there as change one as you can see on my computer, and then let's go look at what, uh, let's go see what is going on in change one. Um, so, who's familiar with uh, Express and Node? If you are, you obviously know this is most likely using Express. You're rendering a certain amount of variables into your template, uh, and we have, uh, what, four variables here. We have title, author, company, date, uh, and uh, maybe you have a blog post or something like that, and you wanna change this. So, we're hard coding, you know, for the sake of time. Uh, so, first of all, uh, we have my author is Christian, company and rhythm, date. So, but those are liable to change later on. So let's go ahead and grab change two. All right, so with this, we've changed the author, we've changed the date, and we don't even have the other variable that was in there, uh, but we're trying to track to show that these sort of things can change in your source code. Um, imagine it being literally anything else you might ever want. All right, so now comes the tricky bit. Git pull, in and of itself, merges. Merges, merges are great, but merges introduce a lot of extra commits inside of your Git log and your Git history. The point of what I'm trying to discuss today is you don't need those merges in your repository or in your log or cluttering everything up. 
And that's when you use uh, rebase. So how does this work? We're gonna take a clone of the master, and now we have a master clone. We are going to get rebase with the branch that was named change one. I brought it down locally, I grabbed it from the origin. You guys saw that before. Um, but as those changes exist in that other branch, here, actually, let's show a log of what is going on. So the top of the repo that I had, that I pulled down, hackathon starter, um, that top hash is fixed Mongo deprecation, whatever that is. Uh, so three, five, whatever. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to grab change one and try to put it in right on top of the current changes. So good, nothing happened, we're, we're nice. This would be the same old kind of concept as you get pull uh, to master or let's say change one was up there and someone else had put that in and we've, we've merged you know, the first concept of a merge, right? But what we wanna talk about is the fact that there's absolutely no merge commit inside of here. So all the rebase did was grab that change and put it directly on top and you don't have any, any wonkiness of uh, a merge uh, commit that tries to inject further down your tree and everything else. But what people are most, most afraid of is this concept of a conflict. All right, so to show you guys this, here are the two different changes that went in. So change one already existed at the time. That's what's currently sitting there. That's your commit that we just rebased down. And now we're trying to put in that other commit. And they both were at the same point in history as it refers to the commits, uh, or the, the top of the tree as it, as it stood before on master. But the point of this is, is that which one should I take and what should I do? So we're not gonna walk through exactly, I'm guessing most of you that have done code before, um, you know how to do a merge conflict. But the key of this is that usually you go in and you know let's clear out your head, clear out whatever else, but the tricky part is in rebase is that sometimes you don't even need to do that. So oftentimes I've seen people just go ahead and say, all right, screw it. So you have to get add, uh, sorry, get add. And that's why this is here. All right, get add. And then let's go ahead and where are we at? Uh, get rebase dash dash continue. All right, well, Git thinks that I recorded this change and all is well. The problem is, this thing still exists in my source code. So think about doing this for maybe, I don't know, five different conflict resolutions that you might have. This is a huge feature, it's been going on for three months, and now you have these scattered in your code because you're kind of a noob when it comes to Git rebase, which is fine. I mean, that's the point. I, I want you guys to be able to use all these different tools that Git comes with. And that's where this little thing comes in. Git ref log. So most of you guys have probably never typed that command in your life. I mean, even if you've ever done uh, a git CLI, uh, but this is magical. Consider this thing your browser history for everything that you do with Git. Um, so Git ref log is basically every action you perform. So like uh, adding, so you're staging something, you're committing something, you're pushing something up. All of those get saved as certain history points in your Git ref log. But the real part is that, what the heck do I do in the case of me totally messing something up? And I just wanna kind of go back in time and try to do it again. Like an undo, right? Or a kill nine for you DevOps people, or a reboot, or a time rewind. Something, anything, help me, I'm screwed. I don't wanna copy and paste that work. So, it's really, really, really simple. We just are at the git ref log. We have all of these hashes that exist as basically commits but they're in your ref log. So all we do is grab down, let's go where we were at, um, let's go before we had change two. So right there, as we can see, rebase was finished, we're returning back to master clone, and so that is the first rebase that we had on change one. Um, so now we do a git reset hard with that hash, and voila, we are back at change one. Cool, so we can revert back to certain things. I shouldn't use the word revert because we'll get to that later and you can explore that a little bit yourself. But now you can go forth and you don't need to worry, you have a way to get back in time. You don't need to 
remove your whole directory, get clone again, and do all of that copy and pasting. Do not do that. I argue against doing that because you're just wasting time. Git does this for you. Other cool things to check out that I didn't have time to talk about real fast are Git revert, Git rebase I, and then if you really, you know, you want to look back at all the different changes you did between two commits with your author and, you know, show up your friends and everything else and be like, yeah, I touched 50 whatever thousand lines. These are really fun commands. And that's the end.